We are here to talk about um, you know, what the industry can do to rebrand itself. And the reason why we do believe that this is a relevant question is because you know, it is affecting all of us. The way we're going to procure, deliver and operate our build asset will influence you know, billions of people now and the generation ahead. So it, it, it do affect all of us. Um, and for the first time, we would like to um, start a cross-industry campaign in changing the way the general public perceive us. So we know contractors have done it in the past, um, consultants do try to you know, brand themselves in the best possible way, but for the first time we would like to be you know, united, you know, the entire industry changing the way um, we communicate um, our industry. We have a big role to play in this economy. And growth in construction benefits many other parts of the economy. Uh, the industry, the construction industry, has enormous reach. The CBI has described construction as being at the heart of the economy. And Construction 2025 is not a government strategy. It's a partnership strategy. It's a partnership between industry and government. Sadly, this vision for 2025 is of an industry that is in many ways different to the industry we have today. So we need to change. We need to show the differences that construction makes to the world. Well, the core of it was identifying that consumers out there were, were frightened of the techno future that was coming their way. They, they knew it was coming, they didn't know what to do with it, and they needed a guide to take them through it. And there's a real lesson there for all image, mind changing, man, image changing. It's about, it's about reality and not just smoke and mirrors. And there's a special reason why that is true. And, and, and Peter spoke about the difficulty of people changing their minds. Well, I'm going to disrupt your evening by throwing in some brain science now, so your heads are going to start hurting. But I'm going to show you, we, we studied engine, how the brain works. And the, the big single obvious fact is that brains do not like changing their minds. The bit we think is our mind is the system two mind. This is our newer neocortex. And it doesn't, it's not a rational mind, it's a rationalizing mind. And the typical model is that that mind makes a decision and that mind then justifies it. So it's not enough just to communicate rational things about the construction industry. Yes, there is rational information, but you've got to embed it into an emotional landscape that will, that will work with uh, the consumer. It's actually altruism, but it's invisible altruism. So making visible good behavior that's presently invisible gives you a chance. It would be so nice to decide saying, sorry we're, we're diverting you, but you'll be pleased with the environment we're creating at the end. So there's a huge opportunity uh, to do straightforward communication around all these sites. Now, this is, this is not a new story, it's an old story. This is a, quite a good article I read from a piece 10 years ago by a consultancy. Um, you know, poor reputation will, will again, it's a tough times. How can the industry counter it? This conversation has been going on for years. It, it's not a new conversation, but I'm great. I'm glad this initiative is happening because I think that this can be done correctly. Um, obviously, not everyone goes to the website, and maybe, but the PR is getting a lot of it out there. And I think there's one more which I like, which was transforming transport into global iconic art. And this is where they're using art to signal status. And I would say that many art can be used on construction sites more. Um, it can be a temporary piece of art, it can be a permanent piece of art. Because art signals status in the way I was describing earlier. You don't have to be as big as Crossrail. Smaller developers can do this as well. It would help if there was a toolkit. The toolkit was almost mandatory. Uh, so, you could, so the planners can, can insist on it and then nobody would be at a disadvantage by having better practices when other people were not making the effort. So that is my attempt to start the rebranding process. The common grounds by which we need to open up 
the word society. We need to move from what it was kind of a, a modernist, sanitized black box where everything happened, we didn't know anything about, um, to an element of collective construction. And, and that's what, you know, building cathedral used to be during the Renaissance uh, with a you know, crazy amount of debt on site. So we don't want that back. Um, but we, we, we do want to engage um, uh, in telling a different stories, as Robin was saying earlier. It's not possibly about having new ideas or better ideas. It is about telling a different story. Now, I had the most fantastic experience with a Trustmark registered decorator. And when I started telling people, do you know what? Everybody said to me, um, oh, they had a great tradesman story too. Yeah. I had a great plumber who came around. Oh, we had this amazing electrician. He sorted it out, worked really hard. And it made me realize, actually, that there are so many good firms out there, not just the Trustmark registered firms. I know there are many others. There are so many more positive stories out there about good work done and good relationships built. And I really believe fundamentally that we should be doing much more to give recognition to this and to celebrate it. And the Trustmark scheme is now built into the industrial strategy as a way of giving that sort of recognition for the domestic end of the sector. And let's make really clear, this is a very dramatic sort of element in the industrial strategy, which some people, I've, somebody tweeted me today and said it was a cure for insomnia. I totally disagree, <laughs> because in there are some real gems. There's some really good stuff here. And th this is the first government strategy ever, which your know, government and industry working together, which has ever looked at this domestic end of the sector and has found a way to give that sector recognition and reward for doing really great stuff. As an architect, I had the pleasure of working on school projects, absolutely fantastic. And lots of primary school children on site, very excited by the whole process and singing Bob the Builder every time they saw a hard hat. Um, one little girl saw me and said, Mr. Lady Builder, and kind of looked a bit kind of shocked. Um, she's probably about six or seven. Um, and I thought, although it did make me laugh, um, but that was a little bit sad too, that at an age where you might still just about believe in Santa and the Tooth Fairy, actually seeing a woman on site was still seen as something a little bit odd. And that's another part of our well-being that I'd like to see sort of tackled. I know that Building Magazine have started a campaign. Um, they did a survey and they said 88% of people in our industry are feeling under stress. Um, that's something around value, um, as is the way that we're paid and remunerated. Um, there has been press recently about pay gap. I think one of the things that our industry really needs to tackle, we need some very um, strong and brave leaders to set targets to address this. Um, if you look at um, the gender pay gap, um, across the UK industries, it's just fallen below 10%. In construction, generally, it's 17%. So almost double what you would expect of other industries. If our industry leaders could form a campaign to change that, that as a message would be incredible and really help to make sure that we retain the talent that we managed to attract in the first place. We try to open up our developments <coughs> to the public very, very early in the process. So the, the, there is a process of engagement with, with the city that goes on way before there is actually engagement with people who are actually using many of the buildings. So the process of opening a square, uh, putting on events, um, art, absolutely, the curation of public art very, very early in the process. It not only brings people to the developments, what it also does is it starts to create a dialogue about what you're doing that actually isn't a property dialogue. It's a dialogue about place, it's a dialogue about things that, that people want to do and the way that people, people want to live their lives. And the interesting thing is, again going back to your point, when you work at scale, is once you start to do that, that dialogue actually starts to influence what you do next. 
they don't make the connection between what we as an industry are doing and the benefits that we are delivering day to day to day to day and, and their sort of, you know, the, the impact it has on them. If you think about as a parallel perhaps the you know, medical profession, legal professionals, or people kind of get it. They know when they need to go to a doctor, they know when they need a lawyer, that kind of thing. Do they, do they appreciate what we in the construction sector are actually doing to provide the sort of everyday life side of things that, that pretty much is taken for granted, frankly, until something goes majorly wrong, and then everyone's an expert, of course. Everyone's got every comment on, on what, you know, what they, the construction industry, should, should have done differently and so on. In a way, trying to you know capture the various uh, provocation coming from the panel. I think you know we need a different story. We need role models to tell a different story. We'll need to transform the holding of a site, which used to be a wall, into a display. Um, we want to become more transparent and open to the community um, in which we um, change um, the environment. In order to do so, you know we need to believe what we're saying. It can't be transparent and then um, you know lie. Um, well, can I just add one, one point in there, because I think with all, all of this, and, and so much of this comes down to communication the rest mm. of it, but I think the perception of this industry, the whole industry, actually will be improved through the quality of design. So it's, I think the fact that we're sitting in the RIBA is really important because there's no doubt that we went through a period in this country where design of housing, design of public buildings and many other things was frankly very poor. Can I just hijack the uh, mic? Oh, you've got a microphone, so. <laughs> as uh, as um, a chair of the 2050 group, um, I have a question about um, what does success look like? And if we're looking back in 2050, and I will still be working in 2050, you know, from now until then, what, what, what will success be like when we get to 2050 and we've changed that image of construction? You know, what is going to be the marker of success? Do, do the panel have any thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, well, for, for starters, you know, we, we said some of the things that we've got at the moment, which is not where we want to be. We've talked about our very poor gender and ethnic mix, successes that we've dealt with that, um, successes that we've attracted the next generation into uh, this, um, into this area that we're all very excited about um, and um, and that we really are uh, for me anyway that we really are uh, an industry of choice I mean um, I'm probably repeating what I said earlier but I think that by that time if some things which I believe can occur do, do occur that people will see the construction, construction as a place that creates better, <coughs> creates better neighbourhoods. The word sustainability has got a lot of traction in recent years, and I think uh, neighbourhood can have a lot of tra a lot of traction. And if you think your neighbour is going to be improved, uh, you feel differently about it when you are held up by a traffic jam uh, and, and all the rest of it. And if the people inside it are connecting up with the community in a whole range of ways, and there's 247 of them, and I think it, so the final bit would find 25 which you are used across the construction community. I won't go through it. That would make me feel that something worthwhile had happened. Thank you so much. Um, I think we achieved what we wanted to achieve. We're, we kind of kick-started a debate. Uh, the 2050 group, G4C, and hopefully their IBA uh, will work on this. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all, maybe a few of your friends as well, um, in six months' time. Thank you very much.